Because my combat potential is pretty limited, I'll want to stay in stealth for as long as possible. Since I'm getting upgrades to both my bow and myself, I will also want XP, which means lethal stealth. The goals of the playthrough inform how I will approach enemy encounters here, which is a pretty organic method of deciding what choices to make in-game. This is also similar to how many other games work, and I don't think it's been talked about much, so I'd love to talk about that sometime in a later video. This is the first notable forced combat encounter. One annoying thing you'll see soon is that the game assumes I want to have my machine gun selected even though I don't, so after the slow-mo runs out it'll force the machine gun into my hands, which makes me accidentally fire a few shots before realizing. I don't kill anyone with it, so I immediately switch back to the bow with no problems. The bow is a single shot weapon, but the great part of it is that it never needs to reload like the guns in the game do. That means that as long as I have arrows remaining, I never have to worry about reloading and can focus entirely on sending out shot after shot after shot. This also lets me keep moving around, scrambling and rolling, which is necessary with the bow as well to stay in a decent position. The rest of this fight is just going to involve me picking off as many of these guys as I can one by one, especially that guy trying to climb up here. Again, you'll see me lock down enemies by shooting them repeatedly, and sometimes I'll land a lucky headshot, which feels pretty great, because it saves on the amount of ammo I'm using, and the less time I spend fighting one enemy, the more time I can spend fighting the rest of them. I think that's the last one. You can see I'm hunting for that headshot there, I really want it. <laughs> and I end up getting a skill point. I'm just waiting it out here, because when Lara uncrouches, that means that there are no more enemies left, so it's a convenient way to figure that out. The next two upgrades I'll pick up are Pain Tolerance from the Brawler category and the Faster Firing Rate upgrade for the bow. The reason I get these is that Pain Tolerance makes me tankier, which means I can absorb more damage without dying, while the Faster Firing Rate upgrade for my bow gives me a little bit more DPS, and it also lets me correct my mistakes, in case I miss a shot or two, since I can fire the next one much faster. There's a pretty big encounter coming up, so these two will help with that a lot. This is the big encounter I was talking about. I'll begin this fight by targeting the archer, taking cover on top of the building ahead. I hit him once, but missed the headshot because I need to dodge a molotov. The reason I target archers first is that unlike other projectiles Laura can be hit with, arrows actually stun her significantly and make her flinch. Melee guys might seem intimidating, but they're actually the easiest enemies to kill with the bow, since by making them come to you, you drag them away from the other enemies who like to stay in cover. They're also easy to dodge and kill. I take a conservative playstyle for this playthrough and scan the environment for more hostiles. Seeing none, I push forward, retrieving my ammo from the bodies I've created. The next two enemies are easy for me to get headshots on. Now, I miss this melee guy, and when I try to bait a melee attack out of him for me to dodge, the game gives me the shove tutorial instead, and puts the pistol in my hands. I'm having none of that, I switch back to bow and start fighting him. But... His buddy joins in soon after, so now I have to dodge and take down both of them. Which is pretty exciting. Once I get on top of this building, the explosive barrel near the enemy archer sniping from the building across from me is a juicy target. Popping it is cost and time effective because it kills three enemies for the cost of one arrow and it does it instantly. Shield enemies are introduced here. Normally this guy would be a pushover because with a machine gun you can just dodge a swipe and lay into him with a storm of bullets. With a bow he takes a little longer to kill but it's nothing serious. One issue fighting shielded enemies with the bow is that you can't shoot immediately after the dodge, because where your crosshair is, isn't where Lara is actually aiming at first. She has to swing the bow around properly before you can take the shot, so wait a second before releasing the trigger. You can see me mess this up a few times because of impatience, but I will eventually kill him. Your 
Stealth double kills are important to use in any game in which you have a stealth takedown and a ranged weapon that can one-shot enemies. This technique can be used in most stealth games and it's really clever, letting you get stealth kills on enemies that you normally wouldn't be able to, much faster and more stylishly too. To be honest, the first place I learned about this tech was from Klockner on YouTube. Link to his channel in the description, he's quite incredible. I'm getting keyring trigger upgrade here because it lets my bow fire even faster than before. This fight is designed to be fought with the shotgun that Lara recently got. I'm not going to do that here and what this will do is make this fight much more frantic because I'm not guaranteed to one shot kill everyone. The melee guys are not so much of an issue because I can just dodge after a few shots as insurance against taking damage. Whenever I see enemies with guns, that's when it gets tense, because if I don't focus them down first, they'll tear me to shreds. One funny thing that you'll see me do here is, there's a Solari thug who pops up above us, and I'll actually kill him before he has a chance to die for an extra free 10 XP. 